thinking as I was in church this morning, I was thinking of the tools that we have and we're not utilizing. And um, I often hear people say, um, if get off social media, um, Instagram and Facebook and whatever. And I was thinking of them being tools, like money is a tool and everything else is a tool. Tools are not bad in itself. They're instruments to, they can be used as instruments to help and hurt or hurt. Anything can be a tool. A hammer can be a tool. A hammer can build a beautiful house with nails and stuff. And also, a hammer can be used to hit someone over the head. So, it's how you use the tools and use them wisely. Some people uh, use social media as a tool for negative for negative uses. They use it to pull people down. They use it to make people jealous. They use it for all negative things. Um, and using it for that tool is for someone's destruction. But there are many, many times where there are some amazing ministries located online, including mine. If you have a Facebook account, you're watching this right now. I'm using it as a tool to encourage, to inspire, to, um, to uplift uh, people. So I'm using social media as a positive tool. Um, if you look at my social media, you'll see uh, sermons, not only mine, but others. You'll see uh, positive conversations. You'll see all of that. And um, as I was listening to this mo uh, this morning to the preacher, um, God says, and he mentioned something about social media and whatever, I said, to, to, to handle these tools um, adequately, uh, not adequately, to make the best of tools like social media, Facebook, Twitter, and all that, you need to have a change of mindset. Uh, he says, he says, People, people don't so much need to get off of them, but they need to have a change of mindset. They need to decide what this tool is going to be for ahead of time so they don't get caught in the melee of scrolling and comparison and all these negative comments or whatever, or engaging with people that they ought not to engage in. So when you're using any tool, you've got to decide what you're going to use that tool for. Most tools have a already ordained purpose. Um, most physical tools, if you get one of those girly tool boxes, not girly, uh, if you get one of those little two ki tool kits, um, they ha they have an ordained purpose. A hammer is to hammer nails. A saw is to saw wood. Um, so on and so forth. But if the tool is open ended um, and can be used for good or for evil, you need to make a decision ahead of time what that tool in your life is going to be used for. Are you going to use your social media pages to encourage, to inspire, to uplift, to, to lift up God, to lift up other people? 
or are you gonna use it to destroy and be catty and be um, jealous of people and uh, spread discord? It's your choice how you use this tool. And, um, and the Lord said to me while thinking about this sermon, um, there are tools in you right now that he's put in you that you are not utilizing. And he says, he would ask you this, this question through me. He said, what are you doing with the tools I gave you? Um, encouragement is a tool that you can use um, to encourage someone, to uplift someone. Um, mental, mental fortitude is a tool that you can use to encourage someone. Because if they see you're mentally strong and then you've you've gone through something and they're going through something they can say if she can do it if god can take her through that and her, she remain mentally and emotionally okay i can go through it um that's what i mean by that um you know your ability to um fix things around the house can be used as a tool for the glory of God. For, um, if you have an old neighbor, like an elderly neighbor that needs something, that needs groceries or that needs something fixed, your gifting with tools, physical tools, can be a minist ministry to that person. Um, so, what tools are you utilizing? What tools are in your toolbox that you are not utilizing? Your gifting for numbers is a tool that can be used for the glory of God. Your gifting for speech or for, you know, um, or for anything can be used as a tool so there are tools that you're not even aware of and sometimes you don't need to start big you don't need to oh i need to start a church now you can start small start at your home start with your friends start with people who you know when it'll branch off from there but if you just keep praying and oh lord what do i do and, and don't do um don't do something that he's put right in front of you he's not gonna give you more to do um and um it makes me think of the story in the bible i think it's in kings where um where the lady comes to elijah the the prophet and says um and the lady says i have no nothing but this jar of oil um and then after i have this jar, jar of oil um, my son and I are going to die. We have nothing to eat. And the prophet says, Go and get as many jars as you can from wherever and bring them back here. And when she did that, the oil just started to flow. Could it be the reason that you're not seeing what you want in your life is because you won't work with the little that God has given you, that you won't work with the tools that God has given you, that you're using Facebook 
instead of to encourage people or instead of as a tool for your business or to as a tool to launch you into what God has destined you to do. You're using it for nonsense. Sometimes we're given tools and we don't know how to use them. We don't know how to use them. We, we have no wisdom, so we mismanage the tools. And the Lord's saying, for those of you who mismanage the tools that God has given you, there is still hope. There is still hope. It's not over. If you mismanaged your Facebook using it, for uh, selfish reasons or to put people down or to put uh, a picture on this wall of you looking sexy to that um, heavyweight person that you know is struggling with her weight um, and you've used it to, to uh, just malign or be malicious towards people, there is hope. But first, you, the Lord's saying, you have to repent. And basically, repenting is to turn a different direction. So, you may have not had pure motives in the past, but if you repent and turn, not just say I'm sorry and do it again, but if you repent and change your mind in turn, God is God is ready and willing to forgive you and will open up the win windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you may, may not have room to receive. Um, he He's really saying, what are the tools? He's saying, what did I put in your hands? What did I put in your hands? Did I put people around you who need a certain service you can provide? Do, do you have a gift with children and I put around you uh, that neighbor who you can um, ba babysit and ver that neighbor with kids who you can babysit virtually while mom works from home? Um, have I put in you a gifting for ideas? He's saying, what is in your hand? Stretch forth whatever is in your hand right now and I will use it. There are people right now sitting on gold mines. And the Lord is saying, you're asking for deeper revelation. You're asking for deeper revelation, but use what I put in your hand right now, and that will lead you to the um, destiny that I want for you. You say, oh, oh, um, the preacher this morning said, a lot of people just want the deep things, but they won't start in the shallow end. And when he said that, I was thinking of a swimming pool. Um, the swimming pool has the shallow end and the deep end. But when you're, when you're teaching someone to swim, they don't start in the deep end. They start in the shallow end and work your way up. And when you take uh, swimming lessons, when I was a kid, uh, they got me to take swimming lessons. So when you take swimming lessons, they have usually different levels. And you don't get more you don't get more more advanced into the deep end until you pass a level. The Lord is taking you through tests 
test and he's seeing will you pass this level and when you pass this level the tests get harder and harder and some people want a PhD anointing but they haven't even passed kindergarten spiritually so you can't go for your uh, a doctorate or PhD until you pass kindergarten. You need to go through the levels and that's what he's taking you through now. So what are the tools on the level that you're on that go, um, is God using for his glory? There are certain there are certain tools in every level of life. In every level that you're on, there are certain tools that God has given you. What are those tools? He said, get in your toolbox and use what I've given you. Use what I have gifted you with. If I've gifted you with the, the, with the desire to make cookies, uh, make cookies for your neighbors and leave them on the doorstep. If I've gifted you with children, uh, do a Zoom daycare for children. You know, um, if I've gifted you with real estate, um, do that. Whatever I, I've gifted you with on the level that you're on, do it on that level, whatever level it is, because you can't get to deeper until you start with shallow. So, so deep calls to deep, but you have to start in the sh in the shallow. You have to start with daycare before you can get to PhD. So what are the tools that God has given you? And he's saying, if you've mismanaged tools, there are, there is forgiveness for you. It's not over if you've mismanaged tools. If you've mismanaged tools, like use them for a wrong purpose you can uh get those t get those get that time back he said he will restore the years that the locust the canker worm palmer worm has taken from you you're getting those years back you're getting that time back you're getting your mojo back as they say you're getting it back. It's not gone. You just need to change mind. You need to change heart. And you need to reassess what tools, physically, mentally, spiritually, has he given you to use for his glory? That's a question that you need to ask in this season. In this time of lockdown, interrupt and we're locked down again. But in this time of quarantine, what tools has he given you? What gifts has he given you to use for his glory? And once you discover your gifts, there you'll find your purpose. Um, and once you find your purpose, you'll sometimes find uh, financial fulfillment. A lot of a lot of people want to find want more money, more success, but they refuse uh, to use the tools that God has given them, and they think it will be easy. One thing I hate about uh, today's. Um, one thing I hate about social media sites is you see ads all the time about how to make, how to make quick money, how to do this, how to build this kind of store, how to build this kind of business, ways to do this, and 
you know? And what people don't realize is when you take the time to foster with care the tools that God is giving you, it gives you um, it gives you wisdom. Time gives wisdom uh, that you don't get in a hurry. Work gives wisdom that you don't get in a hurry. Um, life is the best teacher if you let it teach you the lessons that it's supposed to teach you. Maybe you're not supposed to do that quick fix thing or whatever, but whatever you do, it will teach you something. And then you can take that lessons, those lessons, and use it as tools. So what tools has God given you to use for his glory in this season? That's what he's saying. He's saying toolbox. What's in your toolbox? What has he gifted you with? What kind of tools has he gifted you with in this season to use for his glory? Guys, I thank you so much for listening to me today. And I'm just so grateful for all of you. Um, I'm sorry for when you guys say hi and I'm preaching and I don't respond back. It doesn't mean that I don't love you, but when I get caught up in teaching or preaching, I like to do that first. So for anyone who does that, hi, and I'm doing well, and I'm so glad that you've been blessed by the ministry that God's put in me. Bye, guys. And a lot of people are praying, use me, use me, use me. But what you don't understand is God's already using you. You just have to see it. Yes, God's already using you like you're asking. But you just have to say, Lord, open my eyes to the ways you're using me. When you don't yell at your children, you're use, um, the Lord is using you to show them how to react to conflict. When you don't uh, take that neighbor that drives you crazy seriously, God is using you to show them poise, to show them respect, to show them how to be how to how that handle um, difficult situation. You don't know how God is using you. And he says to ask him, to ask him to open your eyes to the ways he's already using you. You'll be shocked in the ways he's using you to affect other people's lives. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hand, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. 
But if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Instead of being hostile to that person that's hostile to you, why don't you use the tool of kindness that God has fostered in you, the tool of gratefulness that God has fostered in you, to sprinkle some of that on on your speech to affect that person's life in a possible, positive way. You being so combative to that person is not working. Try kindness as um, as I think it was um, Sam Cooke who said, I think, uh, he said, try a little tenderness. <laughs> um, I'm an old school brat. I love old school stuff. But any, anyhow, uh, so try a little tenderness. Don't be so combative and so angry and so I'm going to get them. I'm going to, I can't take this. So tr try a little tenderness. I think that, oh, Otis Redding. That's not Sam Cook. It's Otis Redding. Sorry. So try a little tenderness today. And you... And you'd be so, you'd be so shocked um, how fire with fire only cre creates more flames, but fire with water cre creates um, peace, and fire with, with, fire with water puts it out and creates room for you to um, solve the issue and that's a tool that you need to that's a tool that you can use to diffuse this situation so tools also uh, can be used to fuel the situation or diffuse the situation use your tools to to diffuse the situation not to fuel it. And I'm really going this time. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word about tools and um, how to use them, them for your good and for your glory. And Lord God, thank you for teaching us uh, that tools are benign things that we can use for good or for evil. And we just bless you for the tools that you've given us. Open our eyes to the tools which you've given us, to the way you're using us in people's lives that we don't even know. In the name of Jesus, amen. And I want to say one last thing, one last thing. Money is also a tool. Um, money can be used for good or for bad. So where are you directing your tool of money? That is another question that the Lord just dropped in my spirit as I was, as I was, um, going to blog off, he said, where are you using the tool of money? And the Bible doesn't say money is evil. We all need money to pay our bills, to buy stuff, to eat, to other stuff. The love of money is the root of all e evil. If you, if you cherish your tool over the one who gave it to you, it will cause problems. But if you use your tool to serve the one who gave it to you, it will just be a blessing to those around you. So use your tool as a vehicle, not a source. God is the source. 
and whatever tools he's given you, they're supposed to be a source of glory to him in all kinds of ways and to help other people. So now I'm really leaving, guys. I have the, the worst habit of us saying, oh, I have to say one more thing. Oh, I have to say one, one thing. It's a, it's a preacher's thing. So it's now like kind of my third closing. So guys, I'll see, I'll see you soon. Bye. If you can use anything, Lord, we can use with. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye. Be blessed.